Hey guys, what's another part for us? Secrets of Revenge. This is the Rumpus Room. Why is it called the Rumpus Room? Well, basically, Rumpus Room means rec room. You know, a rec room is basically the entertainment center of your house, in a way. It has all the pool table and the games and the movies, all the good stuff. I mean, nowadays, anything can be a fucking rec room, but. Yeah, here in this game, this is nothing but rec roomish stuff. You know, you got the pool table right here. You also got the video games, the arcade cabinets, um, all the little, you know, things that every rec room would have is here. Anything you can think of that would be in a rec room, it's in this level. Behind these doors is ammo and tokens, so take them. And, uh, get ready, because there's an ambush right above here. So, um, get ready to shoot a lot, and use a lot of that ammo up. Like I did. We got asshole chameleons, we got a lot of asshole peacocks here. Uh, no asshole crabs, I don't know what the fuck was going on with that cow, but he was stuck in mid-air for some reason. So yeah, uh, there's a lot to see, there's a lot to explore, and there's a lot of shit to deal with, but this is not that hard. This is actually kind of easy if you can deal with the enemies. There are some asshole parts though, there are some very long and there are some very hard parts. You just gotta know how to deal with them, which I do. But, as of recording this part, I don't really. Here's one that shouldn't even be a problem. I turn the Juliet, then I fall down here. And then I spend, like, a few minutes just fucking around looking for stuff. And I find nothing, so I jump cut here. I want you to find the claw marks. Can you find them? I couldn't. Yeah, they're right fucking there. That is how dark this game is. I don't know why. Anyway, second floor has health, but the third floor has your first favorite of the game, named Anita. So save Anita. So now that's out of the way, it's now time to be tweak and go to the pool table because there is a baby here. The only way to get to that baby is if you fuck with all these pool balls. And legit get him freed. Anyway, that little area over there, we will do that area way later in this level. These little areas you see of that plant up there and such, it becomes important later on. But right now, we should deal with the pool table, which is simple because all you have to do is push pool balls into these holes, and then you'll be able to free the baby. Until you push all the pull balls in, you cannot free this baby. So, push them in. I uh, would see why it should be needed to explain about or even let you know that you have to do that. It should be common sense that you would use these. Then you go in the hole yourself and this will happen. I thought that ball just goes through that, like nothing even was there. Anyway, there we just saw we saved this Queek. Queek. What the fuck is with these names? Anyway, I once again waste some time, but let's make some progress here, which is another ambush right coming up here. See? Outside of that, there's more asshole peacocks just over there, further on. So get these tokens and get ready for some asshole peacocks. And get ready for some more enemies by those stairs. Now, the problem is I can't climb these stairs without being bungalow, so I have to go back and be bungalow. Jump cut. I don't know why 
I don't know why these dinosaurs have those stairs. I mean, they're a bit too small for them, don't you think? Anyway. More asshole peacocks, more bears. Kill them all. Fuck you. And there's the video game. As well as another Juliet, which we don't need. Oh. Anyway, we need to go and deal with the video game because of, you know, exercise time or... More appropriately, Simon says. You are doing well, fur fighter. But constant vigilance is the only path to physical perfection. So yeah, you already know about this. It's pretty simple. I love that though. The fact that buns actually make something happen in the game. That's nice. Work, but this is only the beginning. Yeah. Only the beginning. The thing you're seeing right now is called Fighting Furs. It's actually said that on the cartridge. Again, but faster and more stylish. So yeah, you don't have to really have me explain what exactly this is referencing because if you can't tell right now, I don't know what the fuck's going on with you. That's what I like to see. Dynamic. Dynamic. Dynamic what? Well, I'm doing this pressing a few buttons. Oh my god, that's fitness to me. <laughs> oh my god. Go for the burn. Go for the burn. So yeah, just keep doing this till you win. What do you get reward with? We're about to find out because we don't have much left. After this, we're done, and he will reward us with the worst reward from all of these. Yeah, just tokens. No new weapons, no ammo or health, just tokens. That's the worst fucking award you can get from these. By the way, better looking picture of this. Nice. By the way, you can't move around. I wish you could. You just can't though. Just a bunch of images. Anyway. We should go in here because now we have to deal with the jukebox. The jukebox is annoying. Uh, at least annoying to me. This took me five, six minutes to deal with. The reason is because you have to deal with a number of things. First of all, you have to deal with which way this is going. Which is annoying. Then you have to deal with going all the way up. And that takes a while because you have to wait for this thing to go through. So I'm jump cutting so you don't have to wait. So if you go that way, if you go for that direction, you can like you know, go up from there if you wanted to. I missed my chance. This is how I got in before though. I went that way. But now your next challenge is to get on the thing that's taken the disc. The only disc that ever takes. And climbing up all the way to the baby up there. The problem is you can easily fuck this up. And you can possibly die and get crushed by it. If you're that unlucky. So yeah, I didn't get lucky in this bit. Which is why there'll be one more jump cut for the jukebox. But this is annoying. I don't like this bit in the level. This is one of the hard parts. Once you get through, you will save your baby named Essie. Yes, Essie. Is Essie really a name people use? Because I've never heard anyone be called Essie before in Australia. Whatever. We should continue on because it could be another ambush with more asshole peacocks and another box surprise. Of course, this guy's coming from the corner. And there'd be more assholes behind me. Great. Great. Lovely. Kill him. Right. You can hear him right there. Shoot him. Thank fuck. Now get rid of these guys, they're no problem. And then go and grab the tokens that are inside the box and explore a bit. 
Um, one of the places you can explore right now is actually, well, behind the desk. Because behind the desk is not only some more enemies that are shooting at me, but also a lot, of, a lot of tokens right behind here that you are going to need. Oh, and kill that cow there. Over there, by the way, is a chain pull which we need later on. Not right now, though. Not right now. But, yeah. When it comes right down to this area, like... It's very easy. But they do something, they do do something dickish in this area. Not right now. But it comes later on. When we're actually going down the stairs. Right now, though, let's get these tokens that are right at the wall. Simple as that. That'll take us close to 40. And there's one area that you can just completely forget about because it has nothing there except health and enemies. And some, not much though, rocket ammo. This area is completely pointless. Uh, there's no point to go in there. Many walkers will tell you to avoid this place. And I suggest you do that because it's not really worth it. Let's jump cut out of here. So over here are some books. Climb the books all the way up. And then I want you to make a jump for that arcade cabinet over there. Why? The simple reason is that there's another cheat code in this area. See this mini game here that only activates when you're on the arcade machine. And basically... What you're supposed to do is complete level 1 with this. Yeah. This is not fun, this is not interesting, this is quite tedious and boring. But, you have to beat this. If you beat this, you will get a cheat code. A, a cheat, normally. And considering we want to get, you know, as many cheat codes as I want to get, we're going to need to go and get them. This is not an easy one, though, and it's not a fun one either. Because once you miss once, which will happen, it be very annoying, you'll have to do this all over again. Because once you die once, it resets everything. So instead of wasting your time, I'm going to make you jump cut. By the way, this is the better way of doing it. Jumping makes you have delay. We don't want delays. So, cheat activated right now. There you go. So, now we have that cheat code, I decided to fuck around a bit more, so jump cut. Right, back on the books. You have to go over to here, in which we will now begin using uh, some few trains. Yep, this guy has a whole trade set. Uh, I don't know anymore. I mean, it's nice. He's got a lot of stuff here, but... It doesn't make this look much better. It makes him look a bit of a, um, a rich fuck, basically. Which well, looks like these people are, because they have a lot of stuff. They have a lot of things that they have afforded. Which surprises me. Anyway. This is the second hardest area of the game. There are at least three. This area is hard because of getting the tokens and the baby here. By the way, there's an invisible wall here that you can't get past, and that is right over here. Yeah. But yeah, the tokens in the baby here, in this little area here with the trains, is another hard part of this level. And the reason for this is because of the trains themselves. One, the trains can push you if they need to. And two, trying to make a good jump like this with the train is much, much harder than you think. They give you lots of momentum. 
and that momentum will fuck with you. You would need to time your jumps really well. Especially when it comes to getting the baby, because there they are some islands around here. The baby's on one of them. And the problem is when you do reach it, you won't have that sort of landing kind of thing that the Fairfires would do. Instead, the Fairfire will act like you are still walking once you land on the island. Meaning that you're pretty much on level of the jump that Bungalow has with that island. Which is really dickish. It means you have to make a jump pretty much near perfect. By the way, fuck you. My ears are touching these tokens and I can't get them. This is bullshit. But yeah, the fucking train bit is just annoying to me. It's not fun. It's boring. It takes a while. And quite frankly, it's slow as fuck because you gotta wait for the damn train every time. Every time you want to get these tokens without having to jump and be lucky and shit, you have to wait for the train to make it cycle to where it needs to be for you to get those tokens or that baby. And it pisses me off because it takes too long. It takes way too long. By the way, I want to get up there because that's the easier way to get into one of the islands to get the tokens. So I have to get these tokens. I'm going to make a jump cut, which I get on that machine there. And it is possible to get on the machine. And then I'm going to get the tokens that are right next to it. Because quite frankly, that is far easier and better than having to deal with waiting for these fucking trains every goddamn second. I'm my goddamn time. So jump cut. So jump up here. Go over here, jump over here, and you will save the next baby, which is Dingo. Dingo. Like, could you think of a more generic name for an Australian? <laughs> anyway, the final part is with this token here. Which, I need to get over here for this train in order to get it. This is what I mean by the whole jump thing. That was on level of my jump. That was bullshit. You can easily fuck up and fall down because of it. So yeah, it's a bit of a bitch. Anyway, and time to play some pinball, or in this case, press the buttons and dodge the balls game. So that's what this is right now. This is Vigo Gogo, and really, the whole point of it is to press all the buttons that are around here to get Vigo's mouth to open to free the baby, whose name is Daniel. And the problem is on the balls. This can be a very easy part or a very hard part, depending on the balls. And usually it's very easy because the balls are fucking retarded. Once you have them all open, you can now save Daniel. Go. That is actually the first time I've ever heard that sound effect from that face. That's hilarious. Go. Anyway, that's it for the pinball machine. Let's go back. Let's go back to, right back to Chang. Because now we're done with all that area. It's now time for Chang. And why do we need to be Chang? Because there's a hole in the wall and there's a baby there. And a little objective that we have to do in order to save the baby, which is basically summarized as kill these people for us. Help, brave sun loving mammal. Rats have invaded our home. It's so unsanitary having small furry creatures under the floorboard. If you wipe them out, we'll reward you with this firebox cup. Yep, the mice are telling you to kill the <coughs> rats, which are 15 of them, in order to save the baby. 
and they can't get the baby out on the way outside of their neck because missile balls do not let you. So yeah, kill the crocodiles, which are disguised as rats, because why not? Uh, 15 of them. Use the shotgun, it's the most appropriate weapon because it kills them really easily and usually in two hits. But if you want to, you can use anything else like rockets, uh, grenades, anything really. I use shotgun though because there's more ammo in that. And quite frankly, I don't like the grenades or the rockets anymore. And I'm better off not bothering using the shotgun instead. I mean, yeah, I have to use about two or three shots in order to kill them, but really, I'm better off using the shotgun than having to deal with grenades. I mean, I do use grenades at one point, because why not? I must give them a fucking chance. But as you'll soon see, the grenades don't really do much in the way of help. They're more like a crowd control kind of weapon, for instance, because you can shoot a whole bunch of grenades with this weapon here, and really, that's really the only reason you should ever use it for crowd control. To kill a whole bunch of enemies without having to worry. And it's not that hard either. Once you kill them all, though, you can now save your baby. That's not a cup, that's a fucking tin! Okay, cuz... Tin... I'm gonna hit him. I can't hit him. Can I shoot him? Flat worked at least. And when I jump coming back to Bungalow, cuz we actually do need him. Just came with being tweaked. We're going down the stairs, there are some tokens here, and uh, you know, we could just, you know, be patient and go for every token one by one, but as soon as we get to 67, this happens. Yeah. Ambush, right behind us. Two white bears. Or in this case, two large bears. And they are annoying. Kill them. Get the tokens, which should put you onto 73, and then go through the door, which we have a little cutscene showing us where our next baby is. I wonder what stupid fucking name he has. But. Right now, we have to go and try to save, which we won't right now, because there's another baby here. But we'll activate these things, because we need to in order to get to the baby. However, you should not activate them like this, because then you kind of get fucked. Because they desync. Yes, they desync. Anyway. There's another baby here that is uh, Bungalow's baby, and that baby's name is is Charlene and you save her by climbing this yeah this baby is very easy and there's no reason to have any problems with this one like at all So yeah, that's it for Bungalow's baby. I'm gonna continue looking around, looking for tokens that are around here, which there are. And we can continue killing off the enemies that are around here, like the cow and such. But... We wanna go get Tweak's baby, so uh, after we get these tokens, and kill this one enemy over here, we're jump cutting because, quite frankly, dealing with this little puzzle here required me to die and fix my fuck-ups. So I can do this appropriately. Because it got out of sync and made it impossible to get to the baby. I'm not even joking. So let's tweak, because he is needed for this baby. We have to cross through three, all three of these fucking machines. This is slow and boring and not fun. 
but we have to do it in order to save baby number eight. And you have to keep that last one unactivated so you get over there. Do not fall, by the way. Because then you can save the baby, whose name is... Get ready, get ready for this. I'm not even kidding here. Nweek. 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 I don't even, I don't even know how to fucking say that. Just look at the name yourself and you'll see how stupid it is. I don't even. I don't fucking even. Anyway, we're done here. Outside of the tokens that are on these shelves here, there is nothing else of note to really give you. So, grab the tokens and leave. What I was going to say, oh by the way, lawnmower is here from the hub. But it begs the question, who the fuck hangs a lawnmower is like this? Do people, do people actually do that? Do, does anyone actually hang their fucking, like, lawnmowers on a fucking, like, coat hanger or something? I don't fucking know what's going on anymore. What I do know is that over here is a fucking booby trap full of another ambush. Full of fucking asshole peacocks. I need bungalow, by the way. Because those stairs. So after I kill this cow, which I will, I'm going back to get the bungalow. So, you guessed it, jump cut. Right, so this bungalow we have to go up the stairs to get to our final area, the laundry. Yeah, the laundry area, the laundromat, whatever. Basically when it comes to this area, there are two babies, you can hear one right now. And here's my problem with this. This is a big problem. The problem is that these two babies are very difficult. And they're very dangerous. Hear me out. Hear me out. This is first one doesn't seem that hard. And I did do it on my first guy. But I mean it when I say these are hard. And for good reason. Right now though, we should deal with the skin over here being Rufus because we need him right now. And take the next spot which will lead us to the right area where the two babies are. Because we need to save these babies and we need Rufus in order to accomplish this. So there he is, turn to him, and hit the dig spot in the pottery. Jump, jump, take it, and you go. Right, so there's two paths, we'll be taking the first half, which is to baby number nine, whose name is Keenith. Basically, if you fall down here, it's instant death, or you will take so much damage, you might as well be dead already because you will be in a very low dangerous position. I luckily do not get myself falling down, which is really good. Right now all you have to do is traverse through bras, not fall down, and save the baby named Keenif. Simple as that. And I just did it for you guys, as you can see. Well, let's jump cut back now because we're done here. It's now time for what I consider the hottest part of this entire level. Compared to the other stuff we dealt with, this is legit the hottest part of the level to me because this part is a little bit unfair. First of all, you have to have a lot of dig spots. It's a lot of areas to dig spot through. And there's a lot of enemies to deal with on the way through. But the big problem is that 
You don't get much ammo or health in this entire area. The only time you get any kind of health for ammo is for ammo killing enemies, or for both, later on in this path. It's not that hard to begin with, because you got a lot of ammo at this point, hopefully. And you know, dealing with all these enemies isn't going to be that much of a pain, because they're pretty much easy enemies. The problem, however, is at the end. And you will find out why. I'll let you remind you that at one point we did indeed have an asshole chameleon. Yeah, keep that in your head. We had an asshole chameleon in this level. Anyway, we're getting close to where there is actually going to be. Did you hear that? You can hear that, can ya? You can hear that. Anyway, I think in this area we have ammo. Because we have all these guys. Yep, there it is. Lots of machine gun ammo. This is the only time it actually gives you ammo this much, at least. Very useful, especially since we're doing some bullshit. And in case you're low on health, don't worry. They gave you health. At least 40 points of health. Yeah, not much, to be honest. However, after this, this next area is the reason why I consider this hard. Welcome to the chameleon room. Welcome to my fears. Eight health. And I'm dealing with at least three chameleons. I just killed one. I can't see them. I'm afraid. I'm gonna see I hope I kill this fucker here. There he is. Come on. There we go. Alright, where's the last asshole? There he is! Oh, fuck me. He could have tapped me there. Okay. Okay. They're dead. It is safe to walk around the Mushroom Kingdom. Right. Once you're done here, kill this guy. And then become Juliet, who is right over here. That is it for that area. That's it for that area of bullshit. Now that you are Juliet, do not change into anyone else until you get this baby. How do you get this baby? The baby's over there, you're over here. Too far away, you can't just jump over there, can't find anything to just, you know, progress through from there. What do we do? Well, there's a washing machine, and it's a dry cleaner. And they have buttons. I think it's obvious by now that I said that. Shoot the buttons, they will activate. Next, what you have to do is... Sort of easy. If you go right now, you're gonna get vibrated and pushed off like so. I mean, this happened to me right fucking now, basically. It was funny and weird at the same time. But, this is not about that. This is actually about the fact that you have to traverse through all two of these and get to the baby in order to end this. Which means more fucking waiting. This level is so slow. Oh my god, just ended. Thank you. We have just saved our final baby, Elaine. There we go.
Elaine is saved. All the fur fighter babies in this level are saved. All we have left are a few more tokens and enemies that are beyond the doors to the exits. We are pretty much nearly done this level. All we have to do now is find these tokens and end it. This level is annoying and tedious and boring and I don't like it much. But it's almost over. All we have to do now though is go back to the dig spot and go through the dig spots again back to the couch where the fucking video game was because there's fucking things on there. Jump cut over here look tokens the rest of them six of them we did it guys we're jump cutting back to the exit we are done with the rumpus room let us leave for good I like how it just stops there for no reason. That took way too long. This could have been much shorter. But it was elongated because of bullshit. The good news is though that we're done with all these levels and all we have left is the boss which I have not opened as exit for yet. Which means I can reveal the fucker! Hooray! Bad news is I take a while getting some ammo and killing these enemies making sure I have nothing to get in my fucking way so uh... I have to make one last jump cut so we can get to the end because this has been long enough about 37 minutes I think that's long enough for this video. Let's jump cut. Here it is! Next time on Beagle's Revenge, we're going to be saving Esmeralda. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.